Hey guys, welcome back. This video we're going to be talking about for loops. So, a for loop is just a really easy way to loop through code a specific number of times. And all loops, like I said in the previous videos, are going to need an initialization. By the way, we're in a, a new program, loop.c, and uh, you can follow along. It's going to need a comparison, and it's going to need an update. And this is very easily seen with a for loop. So the way a for loop it looks is like this. And this first thing here is we're declaring basically a, a, a variable to increment as we go through the application. Now, I think, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure in order to declare the variable within the for loop, you need to be on the newest version of C. So if you need to basically get around that, you can just declare it up here and then say, I equals zero. But for me it works, so I'm just gonna do int i equals zero, and that is our iterator. The next thing what we're gonna do is we're going to do a comparison. So this is how many times you want to loop. And I'm going to do this as long as i is less than 10. Lastly, we need to have an update, and typically you'll see something like i plus plus. Inside the body of this for loop, we can do whatever we want. Typically, I will be used within this for loop, not all of the time, but often. Uh, so in this case, we could say, we could just print I, how about that? And let's execute this and see how it goes. Okay, something, oh, tch, moron, I did them backwards. <laughs> okay, zero through nine. So it printed 10 numbers, starting with zero all the way up to nine. And you can change this by altering the start and the end, but typically I like to keep it in this structure where the first one equals a value and then the next one is less than a value. You can also do less than or equal to 10, like for example, if you wanna go all the way up to 10 and include it, uh, let me compile first, that's going to print out 11 values including zero. And if you want to get rid of that first one, you can just increase the starting value. And you can see now it starts at one and goes up to 10. There's different ways you can, you can write these. And uh, it, the most important thing is just to be really careful with the starting and the ending. Like I've talked about in other videos, edge cases are usually where programs break. So if for example, you're working with a string or an array, and let's say there's 10 elements and you're starting at zero. I, I don't know if we've talked about arrays yet, but basically if you're going too far past one, just one past the end of the array, you're going to access an area of memory that you're not allowed to access. So to just for consistency and for my sanity, whenever possible, I always try to keep this side on the less than and this one just stays normal, so I can change this however I want. If I want to go from one to nine, it would look like that. If I want to go from zero to nine, it would look like that. And the main thing is just consistency. If you, if you truly understand the, the beginning and the end, then it's a lot easier, but I always find myself getting a little lost, and then I'll, I'll usually have to do stuff like try adding an equal sign or, <laughs> or trying um, increasing this one. And as you get better, it, it becomes easier. Now I usually don't have any problems, but I'm not gonna promise and say that I never have problems, especially when I'm using variables. Which, speaking of variables, it's very easy to get this value from a user. You can just do it like we normally do. So we can say the max value, and we can uh, get that from scanf. And then instead of comparison, uh, comparing to max, or to, to 10, we can compare it to max. Okay, uh, yeah, I gotta put this in a string, obviously. Okay. And then we can put in a value, 500. Or I only put 50, sorry. <laughs> and it goes from zero to 49. If we wanted to go from one to 50, um, like I said, just, just increases to one max plus one. See, that's what I do. I put plus one instead of comparing 
less than or equal to, I always keep it on the less than and just change the, the value over here. That is personal preference. You can do whatever you want. Now it's going to print from, from one all the way up to 50. So that's pretty cool. And I think that kind of covers everything we need to go over with the for loops. The main thing is that just be careful with the edge cases and also know that once you get into some like while loops, for example, they're still going to have these same three things. It's just going to be positioned a little bit differently. I like to use for loops when, I, when I'm aware of what the max value is. And I typically use while loops when I just want to do it indefinitely until someone stops it. So thank you guys.